Oh, so many losses. I've I've almost lost count. It's what? Eleven losses for the second time, right? Uh they've lost three games in a row in a week, like they did last week. I almost feel like we did this show already, but let's try it again. And we're back. <laughs> Keep it to yourself, Chief. <laughs> so, is is the goal tonight to go even faster than last week? <laughs> no, no. Well, I, we're we're gonna slow down uh, a little bit. I'm uh, sorry, I don't have a New Year's party to get to tonight. <laughs> so we welcome Just you back. You. <laughs> yeah, no shit. We welcome you back to another episode of the Pucknologist, the only completely live, unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, commercial-free Sharks podcast, wrapping up your week in Sharks hockey. Part of Teal Town, USA. Remember, if this is your first time checking out the cast, hit like and subscribe on the platform of your choice. Leave your takes in the comment section if you can't be with us live. And uh, remember, man, every time we do one of these Pucknologists, uh, an angel gets their wings and somebody wins a prize. Dude, the Sharks look cooked this week. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, dude. <laughs> they blow a home lead twice. And special teams are anything but special. Where where are we at, bro? Um, we are at the point where I'm still <laughs> surprised that people are surprised about this team. Oh yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm not saying you are. Yeah, but it it <laughs> is. If anything, I'm surprised. Like it's it's very much the uh, our expectations were low, but fucking yikes. Yeah. Like I didn't know it was going to be this bad. And dude, tell me tell me I'm wrong, but the worst piece of news I got this week was Bedard getting his jaw fractured because I'm like, oh <laughs> fuck, you know, now the Blackhawks are gonna suck even more. Yeah, that's uh Oof. that was what immediately crossed my mind is like, oh great, and, you know, now they're you know, the Blackhawks marginal uh, shall we say, you know, advantage against the Sharks, um, <laughs> is on the shelf for a little bit of time. <laughs> Just as coach. All right, so you got a, a 5-3 loss versus Detroit, a 2-1 loss versus Winnipeg, 4-1 loss versus uh, Toronto. I got to say, dude, one of the things that stood out for me was Blackwood following Winnipeg where he's he was just kind of like, uh, you know, he didn't go, I'm not a fucking superhero, what do you want? Like, he didn't go that way again. Yeah. But he did kind of have this, well, you know, if you want to you wanna look at the positive side, you know, the last three games, they were just one goal losses. And I'm like, last time I looked, losses, one goal losses, still losses. Yeah, at last check, yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? Pretty impressive, I will say this. Um, you know, Blackwood, it had been... It had been a minute since Blackwood had kind of gotten into the rotation, it had seemed like. And then, you know, in, in that game against Winnipeg, he, you know, a 933 save percentage, like that's definitely a uh, the right way to come back uh, into the swing of things, you know? Big time. But, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Every time I hear the word rotation, all I hear is puff, puff, give. Puff, puff, give. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, dude, the Detroit game, dude, they, they cough up two power play goals, can't score one. Winnipeg game uh, or uh, that one they actually kill off. Well, let's be honest. The Jets only got one power play. <laughs> they were able to kill that off. But Toronto, that's another one. They can't score power play goal. And oh, that's because they didn't draw any, which is, <laughs> you know, something else I think needs to be uh, highlighted. But once again, they let in one. I mean, dude, special teams have just been horrible. This morning, at least, I guess uh, Couture was out there and they were practicing special teams. So there's that. Yeah, and I have <laughs> to think him, like, it, it's one thing for him to go for a twirl, you know, but the fact that he was in the power play rotation, like, that leads me to believe that he's close-ish, you know? Oh, dude, I my money is on Ottawa. I think he starts b by the end of the week. I think he starts before we do another show. Um, yeah, I could, I, I don't know that I necessarily think it's that guaranteed, but it wouldn't surprise me at the same time. Do you want to go Finsky? Mm, I'm not that confident. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cause I don't think, cause like, I really could see it go either way, but also here's the other thing. Like 
and maybe I'm in the minority here, but like at this point in the season, like if the tweet comes out, Couture will play tonight. Who really cares all that much? <laughs> yeah, what is it? Yeah, like he's not saving the season. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you've literally has missed half the season. Yeah. So yeah, you think this is, and if somebody brings up the blues, fuck off. <laughs> Gee, I'm telling you. 2019, we all know it. <laughs> Dude, I'm so sick of hearing about 2019. Yeah, well, guess <sighs> what? Things things like that happen once every like a hundred years, and it's only been five. So let's pump the brakes. Exactly. But a lot of cliche answers following Detroit. Dude. We got to dig our way out. We have to be better. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm so. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm I'm tired of the cliches. I'm tired of hearing the same excuses over well, there's, and over and over. There's nothing more to be said. Yeah. You know, like like the sharks are, you know, it, however many steps it takes to like completely unload on somebody about your situation, the sharks are right before that step and they've done a really good job at not crossing that threshold. <laughs> oh dude, the, okay, Jules, this can't be right. I, I trust Jules, but the, are you kidding me? Sharks are 0-14 without Stern. They haven't won a single game without Stern. Hey, he's a, he's a glue guy. That's what they say, right? Uh, well, and he dominates the circle. Yeah. You need a you know a key defensive zone face-off. He's going to get it for you. <sighs> or key offensive one, and then you see him hustle his ass right off to get a change on a power play. Yeah. But dude, I mean, another empty netter allowed this week. It's the oh yeah yeah. It's uh, Lebanc Le scratched again. Vlasic <laughs> scratched when I mean twice. Uh, oh, but this is this is how disjointed everything feels. At least for me, like you say, Lebanc is scratched, and like that, like obviously yes, we know that to be the case. But like, I don't think I would have noticed if he had played anyway you know what i mean oh there's been a couple dude studenica i was just kind of like is this guy playing <laughs> yeah he's like he, he 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 wore his suit under his gear because you know you, you didn't know any better you know yeah like there's definitely been a couple of those and we keep seeing uh duclair getting bounced up and down zadina but dude and that's the funny thing like zadina he's either on the top line he's on the fourth line there can be no in between right <laughs> Well, because it's, it's either hey, it's either hey, you thrive, uh, you 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 thrive playing with good players. We're gonna put you with good players, and then the other side of it is uh, you're not really doing a good job at thriving with good players. So we're gonna put you out there as little as possible. Mm -hmm. oh, man, and I gotta tell you though, I mean, Blackwood got two starts, and dude, against Winnipeg, I looked absolutely great. Not his fault they couldn't put in more than one goal. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and and like I said, 0 for 2 on the power play. Um I got to say as good as Blackwood was against Winnipeg, I did I didn't I really didn't like any of the goals he let in versus Toronto, dude. Oof. Yeah, you know, that's a, uh, you mentioned Toronto, like I was one of the people and I still feel this way, so nothing has changed, but I'm one of the people who considers the Maple Leafs to be a bit fraudulent and so Based on that, I was expecting the Sharks to snap out of this losing streak against them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they didn't, I'm kind of like, you know, man, like <laughs> things are really, really, really getting bad if uh, if the Sharks can't snap out of it against the team that everybody seemingly snaps out of it against. Well, and that's something we'll talk about in a little bit as we get to the upcoming schedule because the Sharks are literally going to be facing the three worst teams in the Atlantic. If you can't mm. turn it around against that, I mean, pick up at least one win, <laughs> dude, I'm going to get, I'm going to figure out a way of a meme of the law of averages pushing your shit in. Dude, it, it's, <laughs> I'm honestly kind of, I, and I've said this before. I'm honestly Did you like ready to surprised. go back to a college course and tell your your <laughs> professor to go fuck himself? Yeah, like it, it, <laughs> it's just the fact that you know what what this at this point what what this is telling me the fact that even the sh like even the law of averages isn't helping the sharks like <laughs> like uh, what I've gathered from that is that you know this inevitable rebound should be epic, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, dude. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, oh, dude. And I thought I was going to hit the attendance bet this week against Winnipeg. I told you you weren't. Ah, oh, dude, I had hope. Add it. Add it to the list. I finally won something. No, the season's not over. Fair enough. But Fair enough. I think I thought I'm pretty sure that that game oh, versus Winnipeg. Oh, no, you know what? You're right. You're right. I do forget. Yeah. That was my closest. And, and I don't know, but again, like I told, whenever that was that we had talked about it, like I I, I felt like a lot of people were sleeping on uh, the Winnipeg Jets, and you know this game against them was the lowest attended of the three. Fair enough. But, but dude, that, at, go, at go, the same time, they're a good team. But the, run the points percentage, dude. They're the best team in the league right now. It's like a three-way that's, tie. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I, I'm not really surprised that they're the lowest attended of the week. But, like, you know, for some of the people who were like, oh, man, the, the sh- they'll be lucky if there's 6,000 at that game. It's like, all right, let's let's, let's chill. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, Chris coming in hot, bro. <laughs> Law of averages is not undefeated. Has a solid 500 record. <laughs> it, know, would, it wouldn't if it was playing for the Sharks. Yeah. I'm telling you. Um, uh, but in speaking of attendance, though, it was a little spicy meatball this week, dude. A uh, lot of Detroit fans, which, uh, you know, I which think it was. you expect. Yeah, well, and that was the thing. I think Shang, um, our buddy Shang threw out something about, uh, you know, it looks to be more Detroit fans than. Sharks fans at this one and you know and I retweeted over the top going you know so so like every other time Detroit plays I was, here I was gonna know, say since <laughs> since they moved back to the east and he was like yeah. fair point <laughs> yeah I was gonna say I feel like I feel like even at the Sharks apex of being competitive like there were a lot of Detroit fans oh like that, you go that would go always any game. be the game dude that would always be the game that I would go to and I'd be like I never see these fuckers the other 364. Where are where are they hiding? I'll never dude, I'll never forget it. I was at a game, it was Sharks and Red Wings. I don't remember what year it was. And uh I don't I don't really remember the series of events that led to this point, but somehow I ended up like on the concourse towards the end of the game. I don't really remember what happened. <laughs> and Detroit scored an empty net goal and it was so, the reaction from the crowd was so loudly positive that i thought the sharks had scored <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah dude but uh lots of detroit fans a lot of empty seats 12 195 in that one and you know I, as if you're playing our weekly uh game you'll understand why i'm naming these things attendance versus winnipeg 10 521 and dude like we all have eyes t- t- that's <laughs> tickets <laughs> distributed <laughs> Uh, but spicy meatball following to, or during Toronto, dude, evidently sharks say it was a sellout. Now that was it's dude, it's Toronto, the Toronto Maple Leafs, a rare four o'clock start locally. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, a giveaway, the, the Bay FC Jersey. I don't know that that was a huge draw. Uh, but, uh, I'm not saying it wasn't. Uh, but the, a lot of, you know, Saturday, Toronto, earlier game, giveaway, a lot of things go into it. So Shane tweeted out, the Sharks say it's a sellout. <laughs> like, oh, Dowdy McDowderson so trying to intimate something? Or was it sh- Dude, but Becker comes out and put, it is a sellout with cap- <laughs> capital I-S and, you know, two uh, stars around it. And I'm like, okay. It is a sellout, seventeen four thirty five. That's how many tickets you distributed. That's not how many were used. Like we can all admit truth here. Everybody, calm down. <laughs> yeah, but 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 here's the other thing. They right? get so, they, well. This is what I don't get. I, why do you get so? Why do they get so pressed when they announce the sellout? We can all see that not all the tickets are being used. And when we point that out, they're like, well, but we sold them all. They're all just, dist- okay, fine. But you need to put that in the, in the fine print then. And we can stop with this. I don't know that they do need to put it in the fine print. I think. Well, then don't, don't get upset when people go, you know, for a sellout, there's a lot of people dressed up as empty seats. But here's, but here's the thing. So your, <clears throat> your solution it, you know, your your solution is like, well, you know, this needs to be changed because of X, Y, or Z. Well, just put tickets but sold, my, tickets scanned. Yeah, but, my, 
But here's my whole point, right? It, and maybe this is a bit more of a nuclear option, but like, <laughs> stop why? announcing it. Yeah, just stop announcing it. Like, even <laughs> even if like I remember there were like back in the day, I don't recall what year this would have been, but I like there was one point where like the Sharks had some. It was like a hundred straight sellouts, and they did. I think they did a button or something like that. And it's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's like, who cares? Unless, like, unless you work for the team and your job security is directly tied to ticket sales, who gives a shit? <laughs> Green jacket, right? gold jacket. Yeah, like, who honestly, like, when they say tonight's attendance is, it's like, oh, who okay. gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah. I, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm puck guy pointing out that, dude, the weather was pretty damn crappy on yeah. that. So I can I see that because I, I went, you know, I was headed over the hill to uh, Santa Cruz yesterday, and uh, there was definitely a couple spots. Where it was like, whoo, this is some kind of weather. Yeah. But it was worse in the early afternoon when they were cracking doors. So I can I can see that. But oh man, you know, well, it's it's the same shit. Not able to hold a lead. <laughs> Can't win at home. Dude, I don't know that you think they give away any more tacos this season? Oh, wait a minute, you're gonna say law of averages, right? I mean uh... <laughs> I, I still, I think that they should, but I'm starting to doubt if they will. Well, oh, dude. Uh, Benning goes to IR after season-ending uh, surgery. As we said, Couture is expected to return during the road trip. Has already been ruled out for Toronto on Tuesday. So, again, he will officially miss half the season. Uh, it seemed pretty obvious, though, after uh, Studnika was sent down. Well, didn't we talk? didn't we talk about that before? Uh, when they uh, specifically regarding like Couture's return and all this kind of stuff. And we were kind of saying like, Hey, like, you know, how many times are they going to like keep kicking it down the road where it's like, he's close. Ah, we're not sure. He's close. Ah, we're not sure. So like they say, you know, the, the whispers are, Oh, maybe the road trip, but it's like, it, you know, until his, he touches the ice in a game, I'm, I'm not convinced. Yeah, know? exactly. Um, oh, see, and Lacey talking. <laughs> I remember when the Sharks sellout streak ended, they stopped announcing attendance if it wasn't a sellout. Yeah, I remember yeah. a couple of those too. And But a couple, I also remember hearing Danny go, you know, tonight's attendance, 17,562 or whatever the hell the number is at that time. Uh, you, you know, know what? I <laughs> Sharks, thank you for another sellout crowd. And I'm looking around and I'm going, I see rows of empty seats. What the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> my my favorite thing in relation to attendance, my favorite thing, tonight's attendance is zero. Remember that from the bubble? <laughs> yeah, for COVID, that dude. That was the best. That was the best. Dude, there Obviously, was so not... many good ones on that. What was the one? Yeah. that it, Wasn't there a Dallas game that went like uh, quintuple f fucking OT? And they were like, we're sorry if you had any other plans. Yeah, like that was like <laughs> one of the few times where the NHL, you know, appeared to have a personality, right? Oh, and I guarantee you, dude, that was the people at Dallas. That because yeah, dude, go been. go look at the Stars admin, dude. They they're pretty sharp. Yeah, but hmm, uh, but dude, the um, can you can you ask why did the Sharks get Studnika? Yep. I mean, why why do you? Oh, huh? Okay. I mean, I, mean, I mean, you like, sent Chechek in a sixth rounder for another guy. And I'm like, you couldn't have just called up Castles or Gushin or Todd or something. I mean, it's the same. It's the same thing as uh, a different position, evidently. But the same thing as like a Kalen Addison, the same thing as even a Phillips Adina, right? Where you're looking at a player and you're saying, OK, this is a guy who maybe has got more to show. He's not really getting a fair shake on his team. Why don't we roll the dice? We'll give up a defenseman that we've got a hundred of, and we'll give up a draft pick that we could, you know, recoup in our sleep. So I, I, I don't fault Mike Greer at all for taking a chance on a guy that might have more of a ceiling, you know? Okay. I was just asking the question. Uh, dude, w w <laughs> what what point pace are the Sharks on right now? The last I looked, <laughs> 42. Dude, yeah, I mean, dude, r run that. Dude, like that's oh, nearly the no. that's nearly the equivalent of losing every other game, like every odd game, and then every even game losing that one in overtime. So <laughs> if the if the Sharks continue at this pace they're currently on, they're going to end the season with forty three points. Okay. Yeah. Which I would have to I would have to double check. We'd have to crunch some numbers. 
that very well could be bottom five in, in the his- salary cap era ever. Yeah, I was going to say, in like history. We'd have to crunch them. But... <sighs> All right. So, <laughs> God. and still only nine wins. Hmm. Again, why, why, why does this upset you? Oh, it doesn't upset me. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just, again, I'm, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. In fact, I thought that they might be a couple points better than last season. Well, yeah, and I'm with you on that because, like we've said all along, the uh, the forward, the group of forwards is better. Group of forwards is better. I would I would argue that uh, Blackwood better option than Reimer. <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> more think? ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so let's get into. Uh, I mean, we're at forty games. Obviously, by the time we come on next week, it'll be forty three, and every other fucking podcast on the planet will have done their first half grades. So we're gonna jump the gun, and we're gonna do it after just forty. Would you really quick before we? <laughs> Before we do that, would you like a uh, would you like a statistic? Whip it out. Whip it out. Okay. Since the salary cap was introduced, which was two thousand five, two thousand six. Stay with me here. Since the salary cap was introduced, not including the lockout season or the two seasons that were affected by the COVID pandemic, uh, there has been one team. One team in what is that 19 seasons to end the regular season with a total points of less than 50. One, can I guess who that was? Yeah, sure. I'm trying to think who was it, it wasn't the Thrashers, was it? No, surprisingly, no, (laughs) Arizona, no, Columbus, nope. All right, what fucking division they are. They're in the central. Nashville? Nope. Oh fuck, who is it? It was in 2016-17. Do you remember when the Colorado Avalanche completely bottomed oh, out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then and, and then look what happened. Yeah, and and uh 5 years after that they won the Stanley Cup. So God. Uh, okay. We're coming for you 2028. That's we're right, gonna, baby. We're going to get it. But we're, the we're on the that, way. The f- yeah, the fact that in a full season since the salary cap, only one team has had left than 50 points. And here's the thing. That Colorado Avalanche team, I believe they ended their season. Uh, I want to double check here. They ended their season with 48 points. Sharks are on target for 43, as we established. Yeah. So you talk about making history in the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, fuck. All right. So let's run it, dude. Uh, pretty quick here. Hurdle. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I would. I, I'd have to. I'd have to give the guy an A to be honest, because he's yeah he's consistently, uh, you know, there's leads been a the co- team in points. He, yeah, leads the team in points, but I mean, he's consistently showing up. He's uh, taken on the leadership role role in uh, Couture's absence. He's clearly yeah. the captain of the team right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was thrust on him, and I think he's handling it well. Again, consistent. He's worn a, a couple of the losses pretty hard. Uh, you know that. So I guess you know maybe a minus on that. <laughs> you you expect your leader to do that though. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna yeah I'm just gonna say a. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I mean, it, that's the the thing with this team is like. If compared to like a league perspective, like nobody is going, nobody is an A plus or even an A minus player within the context of the league, but within the context of what this team has to offer, Hurdle might be one of two or three like A players, you know? Exactly. Uh, Grandland. A minus. Yeah. I was going to say like maybe B plus only because of like his, his slow start. Slow start and, um, Looking at the salary a little bit, I kind of go, you know, it, it, the, it's like you're saying, it's the slow start. If, uh, if it, you take, take that, those first like 15 games out of it, and he's like definitely A. And so I got to, you know what, I'm going to switch it to A because, you know, it takes everybody a little, little time to, uh, get their rhythm going. The fact that he, the, the fact that right now, you know what, I'm going to on... give him the EA just for the goal. 
that he got against Toronto. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> that vibe that he's got with Zetterlin, I have to do that. <laughs> the, fa- the fact that, you know, he's on pace for 65 points while he only had one assist in his first nine games and it took him, I believe, into game 12 or 13 to get his first goal. So the fact that he's on pace for 65 points, I think, speaks to what he's brought to the team. Yeah. Oh, shit. T. Rame in the house. What up, Ted? Good to see you, man. It's cool you're, you're hanging out with us. Uh, Kevin LeBanc, dude, uh, it's F. F it, it, minus. I mean, can, he, can we give him a G? Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, the guy can't – it's it's a contract year. Unfortunately, the guy can't even – dude, he's getting scratched when Giovanni Smith is injured. And, and, and <laughs> you know, make make no mistake either – you don't have to go back very far to see and hear both of us kind of being LeBanc truthers a little bit. Oh, big time. And like how quickly things have changed. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, the fact, the fact that when he plays, like it's not even like, you don't even know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you well, don't even know. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we talked about it earlier. Like there's some guys that, you see that they're on the roster, and you're like, "I is are they really on the ice?" Yeah. And LeBanc has kind of been that guy, unfortunately. But uh, this is, let's be honest, this is going to be the la- his last season in Teal. You know, I expected him to be one of the bright spots this season, and uh, that just hasn't been it. So well, you ex- you expect a guy like, especially in the case of Kevin LeBanc, like, you know, he his life, like he is fighting for his life right now, mm-hmm. like. He he financially, <laughs> but, but even, but even just job security, like at this rate, he's not going to be in the NHL next year. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Mike Hoffman, uh, I'm going to, st- what C minus. I was going to say C plus. Okay. So we'll split hairs and you know, C's. Okay. Yeah. Cause he, he's, he's been good, but not good enough, mm. which is. I see. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, dude, I need you to be like B plus. Yeah, let's go full office space. You know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, if you could do a little bit better, that'd be, yeah. I need you to be a little bit better to up that trade value, chief. Yeah. Um, Duclair. I, I'm, I'm going to say the same. I'm going to say C. I would say a D plus. Okay. I, he's, I mean, another guy, current- like, like I was saying is, you know, one day, Quinn is espousing his virtues the next day. It's, I didn't like his game. Well, he, you know, he's only on pace for 16 goals right now, and he should be at on pace for 25, like in his sleep, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, you know, I, I think maybe there is a degree to which uh, it's a, it's a percentages thing. It's a, it's a, I hate this word, but like it's a luck thing, you know? <laughs> um, So, that's why I say D plus because I still think there is room to to grow and move forward. I like Jesse Jesse's comment here in the chat. So LeBanc will continue to play after the break because warm body problem after Greer trades the forward core for six rounders, dude. That's the, uh, hey if the, if he's not able to move LeBanc, uh, yeah, LeBanc is going to have to fill holes for people that do get moved. Yeah, you know what? You're you're gonna stay here and you're gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, which brings me to Luke Cunning. <laughs> oh man, Luke. I don't know. C plus. I was gonna say C minus just because. Okay, we're similar, splitting again. Similar to what you said about Duclair. Like some games he plays well. Other games, it's like, why are you on this team? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, now uh, you know I'm throwing in. You know I'm considering uh, price production you know roi and everything mm-hmm. um past performance uh, b- uh until this week barabanov i was gonna have it potentially f yeah uh but uh, two goals this week i'm gonna bump him up to a d plus mm-hmm. because uh, he's another guy like you were mentioning earlier like the ceiling could be there and he is getting some trade talk funnily enough Somebody linked his ass to like, oh, maybe Toronto will come knocking, which would, of course, be the funniest thing on the planet. Yeah, I, I think for him, I think, yeah, D range is probably an appropriate um, moniker for him just because 
he he has come alive as of late, but you know, the inconsistent play, the injury, like it has really kind of jammed him up this year. And I, I think there's room for that grade to improve if he can string together some consistent play now that he's back from the injury, you know? Mm-hmm. And and hopefully stays in a healthy spot and is able to, you know, keep her going. Uh, mm-hmm. Especially, again, with that deadline coming, you know, it's going to be here before you know it. And remember, Chief is only making 2.5 and, and is 29 years old. So he very rocks. Att- very attractive too. Like if you're if you're a Stanley Cup team and you want to add a forward to your top nine, like that's Dude. that's an attractive number. Like even with the lack of production, like that's an attractive number. Oh, so ripe. And if the Sharks just for shits and giggles, even if a team came along and was just like, look, we you know we're we're up against it in the cap, but we got some picks, and the Sharks are like, yeah, no, we'll we'll eat two mil of two point five. Well, you can't do that. Well, God damn it, you should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> the best they could do is is million and a quarter because it's yeah, 50%. half. But um, s- still, though, it would be so great if they could do that. I need I need to be able to fix the NHL, uh, <laughs> dude. Zetterland, uh, again, when it's like you throw in cost, age, production, blah blah blah. Zetterland is up there with Hurdle for me. That's an A. I would say Zetterland is an A plus, or I'm sorry, an A minus. Uh, I like. I like how he's rebounded from last year and he seems to be progressing forward. I just wish I, I would for how high in the lineup he's playing, I would like a little bit more offensively, mm-hmm. but he's been very good. Well, let's see how that shakes out once Couture comes back. Sure. You know, you get a little more talent up there in that top six. So yeah, and and I think at this point, like not not to say that you or I have said this, but like anybody kind of postulating that Zetterlin in the top six is an experiment, like that can be put to bed because, like it, it, he at least on this team this year he is a top six forward. Oh, without a doubt, it's, it's no longer an experiment. Yeah, at some point I I am even just for shits and giggles for like one game or even a period, I want the all Lund line: the Eklund, Granlin, Zetterlin. Sure, I'm here for it. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, could sell t-shirts. Uh, oh dude, dude. And then and you have a little asterisk at the bottom. That's like Cam Lund in waiting, right? You could just do on the shirt. You could just do like uh dash L U N D, you know, to indicate that it's the second part of the last <laughs> name dash L U N D. And then, uh, a, uh, a superscript three next to it, you know, to say like Lund cube, you know? Yeah. Or just the phrase is Lund and done. Sure. You know, so I, see, this is the problem now is, is, you know, tomorrow the shark store <laughs> is going to have this shirt and say they came up with it. Uh, <laughs> oh, but if they were to play in a game in London, it would be spelled L U N D O N. Come yeah, on. Many people. Ah, uh, man. Uh, Zadina, I'm going to go F on this one. Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I just, the- I, I wanted more like similar to LeBanc, like you're fighting for your life. Not only that, it like, I feel like he's been given many opportunities. I would say more than LeBanc. There's been times no. when Zadina has, they've kicked him up. They said, Hey kid, we like your game. We like what you're doing. Have mm-hmm. some time with hurdle and, and Eklund and Al- chief just hasn't made the most of it. Although shoe on the other foot, 24 points in 82 games for a guy making million dollars. That's not the worst. It's not That's the, the pace he's on, by the way. Yeah, it's not the worst. But again, it's like it would be really nice to to see him find consistency. Yeah, I mean, a, a player of Zadina's <coughs> skill set and the opportunities he got in the in the lineup early on. He's a guy that you want to see like he's got four goals right now on the low end. He should be at double that. You know it. Uh, Eklund. Honestly, I would say the same thing about Zetterlin. It's an A- minus because I like what he's done so far, but I would just like a little bit more for how high in the lineup he is. I was going to say B+, plus for the, for all the same reasons. Yeah. But Which is fine. Like, he's 21. He's yeah, growing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I am more than fine with it. And Not even 21. He's 20. <laughs> no, well, Cap Friendly says 21. Oh, no, he is 21. You're right. My bad. Um, but my other thing is, I go back to the Couture thing, is let, let's let see what happens Ooh. when Couture comes back 
and that hurdle line with Eklund maybe isn't relied on so goddamn much, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Justin Bailey, I mean, is it kind of incomplete? Um, I would say, I wouldn't say incomplete because I mean, he's how many... played 19 games. I would say, I, I for Justin oh, Bailey, Bailey almost I, half I, the games. Yeah, I, I think you give him a pass. I think you say B? pass fail. Okay. For Justin Bailey, Bailey, and it's a pass. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree. Uh, Carpenter, was that kind of the same boat as Bailey? Yeah, pass fail. Yeah. Because you could, because like from from guys who are on, you know, guys on the fourth line, like you can only expect so much out of them. Yes, but I will say there definitely over the last couple of weeks, I've noticed Bailey far more than I've noticed Carpenter. That's a good point. Carpenter's also banged up, I believe. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, on the, I, I think the only the only thing I could say about Carpenter is, you know, based on my understanding of what a fourth liner should bring to the table. You know, he's got one goal right now. I think ideally he would be somewhere between the two to five range just for his role. But you're kind of splitting hairs at that point. Well, and Lacey's saying Bailey is an A for the fact that he didn't even have a contract six weeks ago. Fair point. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. On the defensive side, Vlasic, uh, I, I think I'm, we're, what, H at this point? <laughs> yeah, it's not been good. <laughs> and And usually, like... You know, e- even in the years where it hasn't been very good, like you still sense that there's a pulse within the player. You know, no, I'm not getting that sense, dude. Yeah, I f- no, not this year. No, no, I feel like that dude has so checked out. Now, granted, he's got a lot of shit going on in his personal life, which I'm not going to get into. You can go look at it on, you know, go Google him if you're that interested. I'm not talking about it, but dude does and and I think we can say this uh pretty pretty uh convincingly uh at least with some sort of confidence behind it that you go and look at some of his exit interviews the last couple of years where they've straight up asked him like you know you you worried about getting traded or whatever and he's always been like hey I've signed my deal I'm playing it out right you know he he just he seems very much just kind of like it, I mean let's be honest in a uh, in a perfect world he would have been moved to Montreal two three years ago and we all would have been happier for it. I, I think Sharks fans <laughs> would have been happier for it, but again I, I I don't get I know people always say Montreal because that is where he's from, but I don't get the sense that it's like a homesickness kind of thing. I get I think it's I, the sense. Have you that seen his? Um, Social media. Okay, but here, but here's the thing. I have, you know, I have a place in my heart for where I'm from. I'm not dying to get back there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm just saying. You look at Vlasic's social media. A lot of times, it does seem like he he, it it comes off like his. The you know the 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 dream as a kid would have been to get drafted and play his entire career in Montreal. Oh, I I don't doubt that for one second. But let's just let's say hypothetically he gets traded to Montreal who I think you could convincingly say at best they're a year ahead of the Sharks and then, you know, right back where we started, you know, round and round we go. Yeah. And and I'm right there we with Eric, dude. Yeah. I'm right there with Eric. Uh, you know, I completely appreciate what Vlasic brought, especially when when the Sharks were getting him for a song. You know, there was Huh? That doesn't help them now. But yeah, it doesn't help them now, but I will say, you know, there was a time when Vlasic was considered the best shutdown defenseman, best defenseman, defensive defenseman in the league, and the Sharks were paying him peanuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were, you know, but the bill came due. It always does. <laughs> yeah. And wow, is it a kick in the balls. <laughs> uh, Mario Ferraro. Um, F. I'm, see, I was, I was going to say, like, C C minus. Oh, okay. Let me. Can I, can I show you my work? Yeah, go for it. Okay. First off, I think he's being um, put in a position he shouldn't. It's you know for me he's a clear like f- four. You know he's he's definitely a middle pair and he's being thrust into the top pair because there aren't any options. He's blocking like all the fucking shots. Now 
conversely, that means you're giving up way too many fucking shots. But uh, for what he's being asked to do, I think he he's doing a decent job at it. But he's being asked to play way over his head. So that's why I'm giving him a little a little extra in that grade. You know, if it, if he if he was not, you know, <sighs> trying to choose my words carefully, or there's no way I can do it. Uh, you know, if he was getting three four minutes and was producing at this rate, I'd be like, oh, easy C, maybe a B. I don't agree with that whatsoever. Well, okay, well then what's what's your take on it? Because because your your middle pairing defenseman is still relied on for anywhere, just depending on the situation, seventeen to twenty minutes a night. And mm-hmm. so really, you know, from from top pair to middle pair, that's maybe a drop off of three, four, five, six minutes. <laughs> Give me, and, give me a pass shark that you would say, this is the equation. This is the, you know, like it was Boyle, you know, the next guy was Burns. And the next guy after that was Carlson. Oh, they're, you know, they're a Boyle type player where they're offensive, you know, blah, blah, blah. Who, who's the guy that's a former shark that like, you know, the sharks are trying to make him a Dan Boyle, but he's actually a Brad Stewart. You know what I mean? Brad Stewart. <laughs> really? Is that a good uh, good comparison? I no, just could be because I like be, well because I think Brad Stewart was better defensively than Mario Ferraro I is. Completely Brad, agree. Brad Stewart's also much more of a physical player than Mario Ferraro is. It was before the Jody Shelley hit, but okay. Sure, yeah, fair, but that was also what the the penultimate year of his career. So yeah. Uh, no, I, I I if if you had to you know who was kind of the 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 Mario Ferraro before Mario Ferraro. I mean, um, I mean, oh gosh, could you say Matt Irwin? Maybe. Interesting. Like, Lacey saying Christian Erhoff. I think Christian Erhoff had more offensive uh, demand from him. It, well, Christian Erhoff was a much better offensive player than most of the defensemen the Sharks have ever had. Like I, Christian Erhoff. Like I'm not going to say that he's like the best guy ever, but. Christian Erhoff is slept on by a lot of people. There was a reason why he was nicknamed Way Off. No, no, I understand that. But who's the guy you said? Matt who's... Irwin. Yeah, see, I I I think that is a pretty tasty comparison. Because Matt Irwin and, like and, joined and, the and he Matt... joined the Sharks roster like really early on. And, or I'm sorry, like middle of the season. And he had fucker like fucker is still playing. He had like a goal or two, like really early, and everybody's like, "Oh, this guy can shoot the puck." And then, <laughs> you know, then what and, and I see there's a there's a comment in the chat as well. Justin Braun, I think that's a good good shout as well. Yes. And and you know what? And I will say this a little bit of a background. I my uh, perspective on Justin Braun has evolved probably more so than it has for any other Shark player. Like when Justin Braun was first joined the Sharks legitimately I thought he may have been the worst defenseman to ever play for them. <laughs> like I was not a fan at all. Uh, evidently. And, and right around the time, you know, this, you know, it took a couple of years, but eventually I was like, you know what? This Braun guy, like he's not a sexy name, but he's very sturdy defensively. He compliments his partner. Well, he's matured into a very good middle pairing defenseman. And so you hope that the trajectory for Mero Ferraro is the same. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh Mitya yeah, coming I actually in hot. think I, I actually think I like Braun as a shout better than Matt Irwin. Yeah, as, as do I. But uh Braun though, was he not a uh he was a three four, right? Yeah, he was a middle pairing guy. There you go. Uh Mitya yeah, coming in hot with the uh super chat. Thank you so much. Just saying hi, love to listen to you every week, even though watching sharks is sad. Yeah, well at one point at one point we'll be here when watching sharks is good. Maybe we, we think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, you know, really kind of depends on how long this turnaround takes. Right. Um, all right. Let's blast through the Jan Ruda. I uh, D. Mm, yeah, probably. I would say a C it, it would, minus. It, it would be. Because... I'd go C minus if he if he didn't have one more year in his deal. <laughs> I uh, Jan Ruda, like I, maybe this is a cop out, but like I don't really care to grade Jan Ruda just because I don't feel like it's been good or bad with him. All right, uh, Kyle Burrows, I'm gonna say uh, D plus. 
yeah, that plus minus is brutal. I know plus minus doesn't matter, but when you stand out on a bad team, like <laughs> it starts to matter a little bit. Fucking a, dude. That's that's what I'm saying. And the fact that he that there was well, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Henry Thrun, um, incomplete. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I was either going to say incomplete or like C plus. Um, oh. Jeez, Mitya all up in here. All right, dude, Mitya's raising the bar, everybody. <laughs> says, by the way, Braun was my first Sharks jersey. Nice. There you go. Nice, solid 6-1 there. Um, Kalen Addison. Oof. D. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it might have been C- minus before this week. I was very excited for him to join the Sharks because I do like, as a player, what he brings to the table and could potentially bring to the table. Um, but, and, and, you know, this point is partially influenced by someone else. Um, you know, I just feel like Addison, if, despite being a defenseman really has no defensive awareness whatsoever. And, and, and that side of the, his play kind of more resembles like a minor league player, honestly. Hmm. I feel that definitely needs a little more shout out, shout out to Kevin. <laughs> yeah. A little more marinating in that regard yeah but that's but that's the thing he's he's kind of he's one of those fringe guys where you know like you put him in the well first of all you probably you you wouldn't be able to sneak him through waivers but mm -hmm. like you know him going in the ahl like i don't really think helps anybody i kind of think it's a situation where you you basically just have to you know shelter his minutes shelter his deployments as best you can and kind of hope he can figure it out let me ask you this uh ask it chiefs make an eight and a quarter at 23 years old as an RFA, do you think the Sharks would be wise to throw him a, I don't know, a two-year bridge or something? Or sure. you cut your I, loss? Yeah. No, I, I don't I don't think you cut the loss because you obviously, you know, you took the gamble on the guy and traded for him. So you obviously feel some you feel a certain way about him. I I I, I think you you know, you give him his qualifying offer. Um, or I'm sorry, you you uh I guess hope or encourage him uh, to accept the qualifying offer. Otherwise, I think it's one-year deal, two-year deal around the same dollars, and you kind of just mm. wait and see, you know? <laughs> dude, Jesse coming in. <laughs> the solid chirp, dude. Remember when Thrun was leading the defensive core in points for like 15 games despite being in the AHL? I remember it fondly, and I appreciate the callback. <laughs> yeah, how quickly things change, huh? Ooh, dude, I remember harping on that for a couple shows. Oof, that's like <laughs> that is how bad it was. Yeah. Um, a hot juke. A hot juke. A hot juke. Um, Gesundheit. Ah. Uh, I, I kind of, honestly, like Emerson, a hot juke, and Addison. I, you kind of, I put them all in like the same boat. They're all twenty three. They're all making about the same. They're all RFA. They're all in that D plus C minus yep. arena. I would, if anything, like out of the three, I would. I would say I've out of the three, if you're like, you can only keep one, I might be leaning towards Emerson. Mm, interesting. But I've, yeah, I've been wrong before. I mean, Emerson, Emerson, Emerson is, you know, uh, the only regular player on the Sharks to not be a minus aside from the goalies. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, that, so, I mean, Addison, a Hochuk, Emerson, what are you what are you giving him? Because I'm just gonna echo whatever you do. <laughs> I would say I would say probably D plus. All right. Down the line. Because yeah, I would agree. Just because again, because it's like I, I'm I'm not. Oh, all that see, Sharks Jewel's coming in saying Emerson should be a B. Uh, yeah, I, I think earlier in I think his grade has definitely dipped a little bit, but there was one point where I would agree with that. But looking at the sum of the season, his grade has dipped a little bit. I, 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 I if you want to bump him up to C minus, I think I can live with that. All right, Lacey, you think Addison is bad defensively? Look at Gavanki. Hey, we're not bringing up Barracuda right now. <laughs> uh, on the goalie end, I mean, Capo and McKenzie. I mean, I would say it's an A for both of them. I was going to say B plus. Um. Because I, I do think that there have been a couple of games that they should have been able to steal 
and they didn't Fair. for whatever reason. So I would say B plus now. And the reason why I would put them so high is the fact that they, you know, have at times had <laughs> over 900 save percentages with this fucking team in front of them. Well, and you know what? On on top of that point as well, you some of the you recall and we've made the we've made the comment so many times, but the Sharks were one of the elite teams in the NHL with Martin Jones putting up an 896 save percentage three years in a row. So the fact that the fact that both of these guys are in the same neighborhood as Martin Jones and have uh, Martin Jones those years, I should say, and have been better than him at times, despite <laughs> despite the team in front of them, as you pointed out, I think inflates their grade because like the like the things could be significantly worse if you could believe that. Like if <laughs> like if both like both goalies could be getting completely shelled five goals per game every night, you know? Oh, easy. Um, I'm not going to run through anybody else cause I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I'll, I'll run it through and you can just like throw out a letter or incomplete pass fail, whatever. Uh, but just going off the IR and buried stuff, uh, couture mm -hmm. incomplete, incomplete. So it, dude, he didn't even start. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so Sturm, Sturm for me is always going to be an A to be honest. Yeah. I would say, eh, well, he's played 26 games. I would you know, I'm going to say a B only because he's played well, but he has fallen short of what he did last year. All right. Uh, Benning. Uh, I would same logic as as a uh, Sturm, but I would go a step lower. I think Benning was probably an A minus or a B plus last year. And now I think he's probably a C. Giovanni Smith. You know, honestly, for Giovanni Smith, I want to say A. Like, Dude has, you know, obviously only one goal on the year, but again, we know well, what it comes Giovanni down to Smith is, is he supposed to bring to the table. Yeah, is he meeting expectations? And you know what? And I know it's it's kind of a I hate when people say like when you're when people talk about players and they say, Oh, well, he works really hard. I hate when people say that because like everybody works hard. Or they're supposed uh, to. They're supposed to. Have you to. seen Vlasic lately? They're they're supposed <laughs> to. And so but I just I like Giovanni Smith because he has seemed to have, you know, kind of that that jump in his game more so than most, if not all, on this team. All right. Uh, Jake McDonald. To the surprise of myself, uh, A. All right, then. So there you go. Those are uh, grades through 40 games on the second half. What do the Sharks look for i mean obviously job one is to get couture healthy and back and rolling is it though uh i mean you i would think you want your captain to be ready to go by the following season by the following season but, sure but that's still yeah, a long so, time away but i mean you give him these the remaining half the second half of this season to you know to to be the captain again I you know I don't know how much he's hanging you know he's been hanging around, but you you know he's not out there on the ice every game fighting with the boys. So let's see him get back in. Uh, obviously, it's going to shift the lines a little bit. Let's get Couture healthy, get him back into form. I mean, you, the Sharks are stuck with him for what another three seasons after this, so. Let's uh, let's get Couture healthy and back, and it'll be nice to have another warm body because you're hoping that you're going to be able to make some trades. Uh, weaponizing cap space when the deadline comes and trading anybody who gets any interest. <laughs> I think that last one you said is probably the the biggest of them all. Like, you, Similar to if you remember last year when the Sharks traded away Jacob Magna and they traded away Matt Nieto, like... Those two players, I don't think, were playing all that impressive or well. But a team came calling and said, hey, what are your thoughts on this guy? And Greer was like, yep, sure, here you go. You know? So <laughs> you know. I, I, I kind of think that same philosophy needs to be applied here. We're like, yeah, and I think you could point to, I mean, Mike Hoffman is a good, a good example. Like, he's a guy who should have more points, 
But if a team's going to come to you and say, hey, you know what? We like this guy, playmaking winger. He's a veteran, da 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 Greer should be dying to throw him overboard. And we have and tape. And anybody on, for that matter. Well, anybody. I was going to say in Hoffman, it's like, and plus we have tape on him when he was actually playing with talent. Yeah, he's a very, you know, he's a very good player. Uh, Tony asking, uh, who will Mike Greer trade first this spring? And how many players are probably going to be traded? I mean, let's, I get what you're saying, but I like, let's get through the deadline first. Because <laughs> obviously the deadline could alter the answer to that significantly. I mean, I think Hoffman is probably one of the first to go just based on everything I just said. The fact that he's a veteran, you know, you, you tend to see guys who are older kind of get the rub early, you know? Yeah. So Hoffman, yeah, I can see that, especially with this whole, you know, we want to do right by the vets and get them to where they want to be so they get the best chance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I mean, dude, there's a lot of guys here. LeBanc, Declare, Barabonoff, uh, Zadina, Bailey, McDonald, all of those guys to a lesser extent. And, of course, Kakinen. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously where the focus needs to be between now and the deadline. When is the deadline by anyway? Uh I believe I'll double check. I want to say it's I want to say it's March 1st. Hey. Which is a uh is a Friday. I'm sorry, March 8th. Okay. Um but March 8th is a Friday, which is exciting because you know, on a Friday you might be able to say, "Oh, <coughs> uh you know, I I got to stay home." Whereas, you know, <laughs> Historically, the trade deadline's been on a Wednesday, kind of hard, harder, not hard, but harder to take a a, a a random day off here and there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so are we sure it's March 8th? Because Jules is saying, oh, never mind. Never mind. She she initially said the third, but then corrected herself. So okay. it was March. It was March 3rd last year. Ah, okay. So we're looking at March 8th. Uh, so a Friday. So basic a bury the news day. Well, not only that, but I think, I think it's I think it's kind of strategic too because Friday I would say Friday is, you know, Friday is probably the day of the week that usually has the least amount of NHL games on it. So you kind of give teams unless an opportunity. you're in LA, correct. <laughs> um, but you know, so it kind of gives you an opportunity uh if you do trade for a player especially a tra player that's going to become a regular in your lineup it gives them an opportunity to come in have the day to whatever travel if you got to do visa stuff you know all that kind of stuff yeah well and Practice. i guarantee you every time you say friday puck guy starts singing that rebecca black song i guarantee you do guarantee hero and zero buddy who, who you got for your hero this week cuz uh, dude it's it's slim pickings it really is. Yeah, they, um, they have to be a rostered player. <laughs> says who? <laughs> Dems the rules. I'm going to say Alexander Barabanov. I mean, hey, two goals. Two goals this week. The most goals for a single shark player this week. Um, but also just coming Dude, back from the most injury. goals for this month. <laughs> yeah, com coming back from the injury, uh, coming back from some inconsistent play, you hope that he can take what he did this week and continue to do similar things as we go forward. This is going to blow your mind, dude. Barabanov has more goals in 2024 than any other Shark. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, considering considering the fact that we are seven days into 2024. <laughs> like, uh, my hero is Zetterlin, just for that yep. no-look fucking feed to Granlin last night, dude. <laughs> Holy crap. And yeah. like I said, dude, I'm I'm coming along to his game, and the fact that you know Chiefs only 24, and uh, last time I looked, didn't he? Doesn't he have like more points than Timo Meyer? <laughs> uh, let's check that. Zetterlin <laughs> Zetterlin has 17. Timo Meyer has 15. Oh, I'm sure Timo Meyer has played fewer games, but who fuck? Yeah, T Timo Meyer, he's only played in 28 games, whereas Zetterlin has played in 40. So, you know, the injury is a consideration, of course, but even without the injury, I mean, Meyer's play has not been super consistent, which mm -mm. Oh, anybody, anybody who's familiar with the New Jersey Devils style of play, that doesn't come as a surprise. Well, and you know what's kind of funny is I see some Jersey fans like saying Timo needs to change his number back. 
Oh my god! Like that's the, yeah. Well, because yeah, remember, maybe, some people maybe are Santa Claus will come too. Well, like, that's the whole thing. Some people are are stitious, but Jersey fans are superstitious. Just saying. That's not the S T word that I was going to use there. <laughs> Who's your zero for the week? And I know there's uh, dude who isn't. Zero yeah, I was going to say that's week. it's that's one of those ones where you just throw the. Uh, it's one of the ones where you um, you point the gun in the sky to the at the flock of birds, pull the trigger. Whichever one falls, that's the one you are aiming at. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing, dude. Everybody was bad this week. Like I don't think there was somebody that was more bad than everybody else. I mean. I can I like I I don't hate that answer. I mean, can I give myself the zero for subjecting <laughs> myself to watch these games? Like Right. Um like like that's the thing. Like, you know, like the hero zero is for somebody who stands out, positive or negative, and like nobody has stood out negatively because everybody's been bad, you know? It's it's like it's weird the way that works. Well, and and the fact that like I feel like we keep going back to the uh to to the same well. Or at least right. I do. It's like it's, you know, it's Zadina getting busted down. It's LeBanc not being able to crack the lineup. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, so yeah, I'm kind of with you where it's just kind of, you know what? If you weren't a hero this week, you were a zero. Yeah, I, I think that's honestly a pretty good way to put it. All right. So let's move on to uh, some of the NHL stuff. Oh, my God. Um, dude, <laughs> this all-star game thing, I'm going to, uh, my head's going to explode. I, I don't understand why they keep changing this every three years. 32, so they announced 32 participants, and then there's going to be, what, another 12 voted in? Mm -hmm. Is that, oh, yeah, yeah. fuck me running. All right, so with the um, with the picks here, I mean, is there any... I, I I think if you look at it, you go, okay, it makes sense. But it really, to me, screams not every team needs to be repped. No, and that's that's the that's been the marching orders for ever. Yeah, and I get it because Bettman's like, you know, I'm not going to give a reason for a market to tune this out. Right. No, but what I'm but what I'm saying is I, I I'm with you. Like I don't think. I mean, it, it's. I, it is the uh, every team gets a represent representative thing. It's also the it's a fucking you know participation trophy. Well, but it's also the fact that with the three on three term tournament, they have shrunk the roster sizes. <laughs> exactly. So you're always going to get somebody. I'm sorry. You're going to get multiple somebodies who who. Should or should not be there, you know, just depending on what the situation is like the one that immediately comes to mind. And I understand part of it is a marketing thing, but like Austin Matthews is an all star 100 percent. But his teammate, William Nylander, I would argue this year is more of an all star. But but you know, doesn't the sponsors, Austin. Does it, the sponsors and the kids are not going to tune in if it's not a sexy name. Yeah, but I think I think. Well, to me, William Nylander is a very sexy name. I think so too, but you know, your average, your well, average Joe yeah, fan the, is not going to agree with that, especially the, especially in Toronto, dude. Like, you would be surprised. Like, some of the commentary that I hear and read from Maple Leafs fans and Maple Leafs talking heads, you'd you'd think that Nylander is some pigeon who like sucks at hockey, dude. Like, it's 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 amazing to me. This may bake your noodle. Mm-hmm. I have among my you you know that I have a somewhat significant jersey collection. Mm -hmm. I have very few. I I don't even know that it's you could count them all on one hand because that's how few there are. I have a Calgary Flames jersey, and I have two Toronto jerseys. Mm -hmm. With two guesses, you could probably guess the names on the back of the Toronto jerseys. Well, I know one of them is Nylander. There you go. The other one, of course, being Marlowe. Sure. But yeah, it's like, no, that's a sexy name to me. And I get what you're saying, but I think, and I think I tweeted this to you. 
it for me it's Austin the sexy name fine but doesn't when this was all named wasn't chief leading the entire league in goals yeah then that is so true. and that's so that that's would be the I thing see. everybody would be losing their shit if they went Nylander and not Matthews because oh how does the guy who's leading the fucking entire league in goal scoring not listed yeah but here's the other but here's the other thing it, it, the NHL does this to themselves where they say oh we're going to name the first 32 players, one from every team, and then you, the fans, are going to come up with all 11, like or the remaining 11, rather. The NHL should just drop the fucking full teams at once. Dude. All at once. Dude. Like, the fan vote, like, get, yeah, like, no, fuck your fan vote. Yeah, the fan vote is so stupid because it, it's, like, it, it's really kind of peculiar to me because, like, Everybody bitches and moans. Oh my God, I can't believe my guy is not going to the All Star game. Which, you know what? If you feel that way, that's cool. That's fine. On some level, I feel that way. But then, why do you care if you're ultimately not going to tune in? It's like the people who don't <laughs> vote. It's like the people who don't vote in elections and then bitch about the outcome. <coughs> well, it's just it's just the reverse of that. You bitch about who goes, but then you don't watch anyway. So who cares? Well, the thing that gets me is the NHL Batman that it's no, no, no. You you sh you fucked this all up with the John Scott thing. Mm -hmm. You allowed all these votes and everybody, you know, let's give it to the fans. And then the fans wrote in John Scott. He went there and then you guys had a hissy fit. You know, Batman, oh, we got to fix these rules because we can't have this vote for the worst shit happen again because it makes us look like morons. And it's like, I guarantee you, dude, that John Scott All-Star game had to have been the highest rated fucking game in the last 20 years. If not the top one, definitely in the top three. Yeah. It was it was such a fucking fear. Not to mention the fact that, you know, Chief ends up getting the MVP. For, you got Pavelski. And legitimately earned it. Yeah, and but well, Pavelski and Burns working their ass off to make sure that happened. But dude, I mean, it was such a great fucking story. But then it's like, oh no, we hate great stories here at the NHL. Fuck that noise. Let's let's fucking throw that out the window. But yeah, I hate this thing where it's oh the fans can vote and they can vote you know two hundred times a day for the you know where they artificially jack up these numbers. I see. I like your thing. It's like we're not. Dude, they're not even halfway through the fucking season. And they're dropping the names. All half of the guys on this list, I'm not saying they would, but let's, you know, let's be honest. There's a guy here or there. Maybe it's maybe it's Forsberg. Maybe it's Barzal. Maybe it's Aho. Somebody fucking goes off a cliff in the second half. I'll never, dude, I'll never forget it. I may I may have made the point every year since. We've been doing this podcast in 2015, 16, Leo Komarov went to the all-star game because, uh, you know, going into the time to make selections, um, going into the time to make selections, he had, uh, like, he had 16, he had something crazy. It was like 16 goals or, uh, Sorry, 15 goals. He had 15 goals going into the selection process. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, wow, 15 goals at this stage in the game? Like, wow, yeah, Leo Komarov, he had four the rest of the regular season. I was going to say, finish with 19. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it, it, it's and, – and, and, you know, I had never considered this point until I heard it on the radio a couple days ago. But, uh, you know, Pierre Lebrun had said, you know, everybody's talking about how they can fix the All-Star game and – you know, Pierre Lebrun is much on the team of like, why do you even need an all-star game? Like the players hate it. The majority of fans don't watch it. Like, you know, like the, and the fact you know, that they're expanding it to three days now. Well, I think that's fine. I don't, I don't really take <laughs> issue. I don't really take issue with that because, you know, to the end, you're going to take something that people don't watch and m expand it. Well, to the to the NHL's credit, they're trying to do things that make it more interesting. But the thing is, the All Star Game is for and I and I'll say as a kid who watched hockey once upon a time, I legitimately enjoyed the All Star Game at one point. It was appointment theater for me. The All Star Game is for kids who are getting into hockey and want to watch a bunch of different players, and it's for the sponsors to you know grease the palms and do all that kind of stuff. So, 
you know, that I understand. I understand having some kind of event that caters to that, but putting it out in the public sphere as if it's some kind of big marquee event that everybody should care about, like it's never going to happen. So they may as well just quit trying. <sighs> I'm telling you, but uh, in, in more reason, of course, to hate this fucking league when it comes to that shit is the announcement where it's like the first 32 participants will be announced and we're going to do the Eastern conference during pregame and then we'll do the Western during intermission, just drop it all at the same time, you assholes. Along with what you're saying, don't don't do this uh, this shit where it's going to be uh, <laughs> 32, and then we're going to allow this vote. Just put them all out there and be done with it, and then Twitter can lose their mind for a couple days talking about all the snubs, uh, and and going back to the whole idea of. Not everybody needs to be represented. For, you know, there's going to be how many? It's 12, 30, so 44 participants? Yeah, 11 for each team. Yeah. Uh, uh, dude. <laughs> Hurdle is 42nd in points, so he would, like, just fit in under the wire. But Pavelski's 24th. Nyquist, your, your dude is 37th. And the other thing, Edmonton has three guys in the top 21. And if you change the parameter from centers to just all forwards, Hurdle falls to 81st. Granlund is 98th. So the point is, yeah, you, not every term the team needs to be repped. Yeah, and, but 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 here's 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 something else to chew on as well. Is so this this graphic that you have up with uh, the 32 uh, initial representatives, right? Mm-hmm. Of these 32 people. One defenseman. Yeah, what the fuck is that about? Because in three on three, like everybody's a forward. Kind of thing. <laughs> well, dude, and two goalies. Honestly, and here's, neither here's of them the is, and, and neither of them is named Thatcher Demko. The dude, I'm telling you right now, an entire podcast could be dedicated to how just completely stupid the entire process is. Like, I can, I. I I could give you 10 names right now that should be there over, you know, I, I don't want to say over anybody else, but like in addition to anybody else, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, no, I tweeted out some myself that I was just like, okay, some of this is certainly a fucking choice, but you know, it's whatever. I don't really care. Well, a lot, well I was going to say a lot of people, um, flip their shit over Shesterkin getting in over Panarin, but at least Panarin has, it, it was like announced later in the day. It's like, uh, dude's expecting his second child. He's already, like, he already said, please don't send me. I don't want to Yeah, go. but this is like counting grains of sand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And look, Ovi's already bagged out. Uh, do, do you still get suspended a game for bagging out? Wasn't that, Honestly, a, wasn't that a thing at one point? It was at one point. I don't know that it still is. Uh, I just, but because... let's be honest, dude. That is pretty goddamn funny that the NHL is going to go, oh, you don't want to go play in this thing that nobody watches and a lot of people don't give a shit about? <laughs> We're going to suspend you a game. Well, and so apparently, <sighs> apparently uh, the NHL went to, um, they went to a handful of the teams and said, hey, we're thinking about naming this guy to the all-star team. Is he going to go? Yes or no? Well, at and least that was smart. No, and if the answer is no, then the NHL went with somebody else. Well, at least that was smart. So, so that's how Tom Wilson got there. Got it. <laughs> Honestly, like the Ovechkin play of like, oh, you're going to – like I don't want to do this. So if you suspend me, like I don't care. Like that I think is the best approach to take to this. Like – well, and especially if it's a guy with Ovechkin's background who's been named like 10 times. Right. And I know there was, there was one year, there was one year that he went because like Sidney Crosby was going. And so it was like a real kind of, you know, festival of good feelings. thing. Sure. I think it was, I think it was the, the hundredth year anniversary of the NHL. And like, they were both on the hundredth greatest player list. So that makes sense, you know? Sure. And there was, I think he went the year after the year after the Capitals won the Stanley cup. I think he went just to kind of make the appearance, you know, but aside from that, like, you know, like why, you know, you can, you know, you're ostensibly, you know, if you play in this all-star game, you're ostensibly working overtime. You know, if you if you if you if you put it in real and if you put it in real job context, you're 
you're working unpaid overtime yeah. when all of your peers are in Cancun for 10 days. Yeah, the, and the ones that aren't as good at their job. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the funniest part. I'm I'm very much of like, yeah, get rid of just, I'm I'm fine with having a bye week or like a 10 week window in the minute in the middle that says, you know, we're all taking a break and maybe you you try to fashion it around football playoffs or whatever. So it's like, yep, we're all going to take a, a break between uh, the Wednesday before and the Wednesday after the Super Bowl or whatever. Uh there you go. And as for all star awards or whatever, just give out awards at the uh, at the end of the season, so that they're actually about the season and not what you did for the first thirty five, thirty eight games. Let's let's do like the golden gold glove, silver slugger award in baseball. Just do the same thing in hockey and be done with it. Well, but, you know what I, I it, you know again I'm definitely team get rid of the all star game altogether. But if you absolutely have to, like, why? You know, like, let's be honest. We all know what the most fun part of the All Star game is. It's the skills competition. Why not just gas the All Star game and, you know, imp- uh, increase the skills competition? More players, more obstacles, more stakes. You know, like, mm-hmm. like, like, you don't like the best players in the world all playing a hockey game against each other. Like, that's not fun. But, like, if you're watching skill guys do skill things, that could be fun. It, dude. Especially. The year in St. Louis when they had the platform in the crowd and guys were ripping it across the seats, yep. that was fun. That was cool. Oh, dude, I liked it when they had that thing where uh, where they were on the strip and Pavelski yes. and whoever else was out there and they had to, you know they're trying to hit cards for a yes, hand. I, I fondly remember that moment. <laughs> so yeah, shit yeah, like but, that. I but I'd be I'd even be fine if they were just like you know what we're gonna do something different this year here's the fucking 32 here's the the all-star from all 32 teams or whatever and they're all gonna go to tahoe this weekend and we're gonna put them in packs of four and they're all gonna play golf or (laughs) here's another thing this is this is getting wild this is getting vintage here ready for this (laughs) whip it out why not do it you know a long 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 time ago the nhl they did a thing where it was like where it was like the Stanley Cup champion played an exhibition game against the NHL All-Stars and there were incentives and that kind of stuff. Or, you know, the NHL claims they want to be a global phenomenon and they want hockey to be a big thing. Why not say, hey, you know what? It's whatever. It's it's between Christmas and the Winter Olympics, which I know the Winter Olympics are not this year, but that time frame. Say, hey, you know what? This is our <laughs> NHL All-Star team, All-Star game. Maybe you have to do it in the summer. I don't know. But you say, this is our NHL All-Star game. We're going on tour. We're going to go play the KHL All-Stars. We're going to go play the Swedish Hockey League All-Stars. We're going to go play the Finnish Hockey League All-Stars. It's going to be a pro hockey league All-Star players tour. What, and you ha- and what if you, you do... Um, and obviously, but. What, it, what if you... One of the things you do is you do the skills competition, and part of winning the skills competition determines, like, since they're going back to that silly thing where they're going to, like, draft their teams right okay so the skills competition like determines who the the draft order um like for the nhl for the for the all-star draft you mean yes and i don't know that that's really something to play for you know yeah but i mean it can't be any more hokey than the shit that's already happening see here's the thing here's the thing the only way the only way that you get players to care about it is if you put real stakes in it, such as playoff <laughs> seeding, home ice advantage, these kinds of things. No, which I, the think, NHL I think you, would never go. No, I think you put real stakes in it as an S T E A K S. Only the winners get to eat the good steak. Everybody else gets like chicken or fish. That's the only way. I'm tired of talking about this. Can we move on? Sure. <laughs> Give me. We talked about this last week. We kind of teased it. Who are your teams to watch in the second half? Who who who's the team in the Eastern Conference that you're like? Don't sleep on these motherfuckers. I know that the first forty they haven't done that well, but in the second half, that's when they're gonna fucking jump up and surprise you. Um, are we doing this just across the whole league or like each conference kind of thing? 
Uh, conference, division, whichever floats your boat. I mean, if you got one in the Atlantic and one in the Metro, fucking do both. I don't care. I would say the team you don't want to sleep on, and and I don't really need to explain myself beyond saying their name, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yep. Like, until they're dead and buried, you should never sleep on them. You know, because and that's, they... that's for, they ha- for the Atlantic or for the East? That's for the East. Okay, cool. Because they have they have that ability to completely sneak up on people, especially you know if they're able to add a player or two or three at the trade deadline, like you should you know, never sleep on them, never ever ever sleep on them until they give you a reason to. I can see that. I'm, t- you know, the team that I was just kind of like, you know, who I think might surprise some people uh, mm-hmm. in the East is, uh, and I hate to say this, the Detroit Red Wings. No, I think that's actually a really solid pick. Okay, I mean this is know. the th- this is the best their roster has been in years. Yeah, but it's you know I still feel like there's a lot of people that said eh, you know they're they're they are what we thought they were. They're you know they're going to be the team that just doesn't make it because they're that's the spot where they're at at their rebuild. Another season or two, and they're going to be you know they're going to be uh, fighting for for playoffs. I I think they might be a team that. <laughs> you know, especially if Jersey continues to do what they've been doing, I'm thinking, you know, the Red Wings might just sneak up there and do a wild card spot. Mm-hmm. So conversely, the team that I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, who might fucking fall off a cliff in the second half, I'm going to say is the devils. Yeah. I, th- I that is a, something I agree with completely. The Devils are one of, honestly, the Devils are one of many teams in the Eastern Conference that I think are pretty Frauds. fraudulent. <laughs> Washington Capitals are another team that's a bit fraudulent. Philadelphia Flyers are fraudulent. Toronto Maple Leafs are fraudulent. Now, that's not to say that all of those teams are going to miss the playoffs, but like, you know, some, you know, I would say all but the Leafs are probably going to miss the playoffs, and then the Leafs, we know what they do in the spring. So, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and in I, I would say the Flyers have to be the team that people are most surprised by after 40 games. Do and you remember do you remember two years ago <laughs> when do you remember two years ago when the Ducks no. were playing really well? They were playing really well and at the all-star break they were in a playoff spot and everybody was like creaming their jeans over it. And I was like, no, 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 hold on, because they still <laughs> suck. It's the same thing with the Flyers. You think so? So is that the team you think is going to be like jumping off the cliff in the second half? Dude, jumping off of it, they're going to like, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they're going to do. Thank you. They might jump off in the next four weeks. Like, let's be real here. Okay. So you're saying right now they're, you know, third, salute, you know, they're, they're in a playoff position. You're saying come game 82, they're out. Yeah. Because okay. Because. The Red, to your point, the Red Wings are going to wake up. The Tampa Bay Lightning are going to wake up. I still think the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to wake up. Oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know, no, man. Okay, uh, that one we again, might offline. We might have to have a Finsky on that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, in the West, uh, who, who's your team to not sleep on? During like the- who's the team where who, who's the team where it's like you know. Don't even think about them because they suck and they're trash. No, no, no. I'm t- no. This is this is the team that right now is out of the playoffs, and by game eighty two, you're like, where the fuck did they come from? Because at game forty, they were way out. Honestly, <coughs> or is, none of these. Teams. I was gonna say, is there one? Maybe you you. Well, might here I'll give you the to, here. You might be able to convince me of the Seattle Kraken. Okay, I'll say that. Well, here, you know what? Maybe I should have went first to give a better example. I'm going to say, like, out of the teams that are that are kind of, you know, not... Okay, yeah, I, uh, I phrased it wrong. The team that I think is going to be, like, the biggest bump in the West, uh, the team to look out for for me is Edmonton. Well, I mean, they're in a playoff spot right now. In so. a playoff spot, but, like, second wild card spot? You know, they, it, that's one you of those. You think they have more to grow, kind of thing. Yeah, I, dude, I think Edmonton will push one of the three in the currently in the Pacific out. Yeah, I could see that. And and conversely, my my team to watch that could be going off the cliff is Vegas. Um, 
Dude, they have the worst record in the West over the last 10 games aside from the Sharks. It depends on if their goalies can get healthy. Sure, but I mean, they have so many. Right, but like I, I, I'm more inclined to agree, agree with you if they lose both their goalies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, could happen. <laughs> but I don't know. It's, Vegas has lost some games this season that were very – the, that those were games that were like locks in the past. And they've, they, I don't know. There's just been something about Vegas. I don't know about, I didn't think losing Carlson was going to be that big of a deal. But uh, since he's gone injury, oof, I don't know. It's been, it's been a little odd for me, but I'm going to say. Bill, bill huh? always comes, the bill always comes due. Sure. So, yeah, in the West for me, I think Edmonton in the second half could potentially have, uh, out of all the teams, they could have the best, uh, should I say, the the best record over that stretch. I'm not saying they will. I'm saying it's, you know, it's. I don't know. It's, Vancouver has been a hellacious surprise for me, as has Winnipeg. But I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Edmonton. You think Winnipeg's play is surprising? That's embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah Edmonton for me is like the biggest j- uh, jump up in the second half and I, I think Vegas could I think Vegas very well may make the playoffs but I don't think it's going to be in the top three I think it'll be a, as a wild card yeah that's fair what about you hmm. I gotta say dude I'm a little nervous about Dallas lately I, I kind of wonder if they like Spit, no. spit it a little too, uh, a little too quickly. Honestly, the team. I think I'm with you, even though they are technically in a playoff spot. I think I am with you. The team, the team that could finish the season significantly higher than where they are. I do agree with you. It's the Edmonton Oilers. I, I do just because, like, you know, they have probably the best top end talent in the league, and so you can't sleep on that. But at the same time, that's not indicative of long-term Stanley Cup success. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could also see the Seattle Kraken sneak into the playoffs. Um, but And as for teams I could see drop out, I got to be honest, none of these eight teams that are currently in a playoff spot, I, I really see like definitively dropping out. You know, it's kind of like... Um, kind of like the Eastern Conference was a year ago, where by the All-Star break, like you knew who the top eight were just because there was such a clear separation. And I kind of feel like that's where the West is right now. Like... You know, uh, St. Louis, Seattle, Arizona, Calgary, Minnesota, like they're all within striking distance, but I'm just, I'm not buying it, you know? Yeah. Well, and Seattle's on a six game winning streak. Right. So you have to think they're going to lose at some point. And, you know, winning six games got them close. It didn't even get them back into a spot. You exactly. Know? Well, because Edmonton is on a seven game winning streak. <laughs> right. So there you go. Oh, man. So that's, uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how that whole thing works. Uh, dude, speaking of the Jets, uh, so Perfetti said Hartman told him he was going to get a high stick. Is that what happened? Are you, mm-hmm. you, you following this whole thing? Yeah. What the hell happened? Well, there was a, there was an incident where um, somebody on the Jets, I can't recall who it was, but somebody on the Jets Brendan got Dillon, tied up. right? It might have been, yeah. They got tied up with Kaprizov, and it was kind of like a, hey, you know, you jammed up our guy, so like, you know, we kind of we have to get you back for it, kind of thing. But the but the fact that that he's on mic saying, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pay for this. Yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, one of the things that's in the CBA is uh, dialogue that's picked up on live NHL, like players wearing body mics. That dialogue is not allowed to be used for supplemental discipline. Oh yeah, no, and 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 I mean, let's be honest. If it was, there would be no NHL. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Wouldn't have enough players to to put games together. But, dude, just uh, I don't know. I just I think uh, a, a fine in that situation is pretty lame. Uh, I think it should start with suspension. But again, we're talking about a league that uh, you know suspension is always like the last thing. It's like no, no, no. Just uh, you know, we're only gonna we're just gonna find him dinner tonight. It's fine. Did you uh, check out any of the Winter Classic? I did. I watched the game. And, oh, uh, so you did because you seem to be one of the few. Because based on the ratings, oh fa, dude, worst rated Winter Classic of all time so far. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, there's two reasons why I watched the game. Number one, um, there was a function that I attended um, that the <laughs> that goal had was a TV? <laughs> the goal was the goal was to watch the game. Um, so that was part of it. The other part of it was uh, I had some money on the game, so there were stakes for me. <laughs> hey now, yeah, dude, that'll get me to watch shit that I have no desire whatsoever to watch. Hello? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I didn't hear a question there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I mean, that was really, and the thing is, like, I, I still think, you know, as an event, especially if you attend, the the out, the out NHL outdoor game, it's a cool feat to be able to build an ice rink in a baseball stadium or a football stadium or whatever. It's a really cool feat, but the shine has worn off a little bit just because yes. it feels, it feels like a regurgitation the same year after year after year. And, and, and I'm, I've kind of been saying like, you know, like I, I've had a lot of ideas specifically about the outdoor games. One of them was make the all-star game, the outdoor game. That was, yes. an idea I had. Yes. but all also, you know, they, they have all this different branding, right? Winter Classic, Heritage Classic, Stadium Series, yeah. all this kind of stuff. It's, they it's... have all this different branding. But the one that I'm looking at is Stadium Series. A series not... would imply... Yeah, more than one. <laughs> right? Why not make it... And I've said this for years. This is not new information if you've been listening to this podcast. Why not make it a legitimate series? You know, there was the one year, I believe it was 2014, where the the stadium series was at Yankee Stadium. And guess what? Uh, the Rangers and the Devils and the Islanders, they all came together and played each other. And it was a legitimate series. Mm -hmm. You no, know, I'm and, totally and now, down with that. The, the... And, you know, they are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, they are doing, you know, the, the Devils and the Islanders are co-hosting. Um, an outdoor game this year, the Devils and Flyers, and then the Islanders and Rangers are both playing uh, at MetLife Stadium. So that is a series. So good job, NHL. But what are the stakes? You know, why should I care, right? Well, again, it, to me, it just comes down to, first off, like when it first started, it was like, okay, you know, cute idea, which, you know, and, and it seemed pretty obvious that, okay, that, well, the NHL is going to run this into the fucking ground. Because, you know, everybody, oh, it worked. Let keep on doing it. Yeah. And then let's do it more. Yeah. And, and, and of course, what was the big complaint in the first, you know, five or six, seven? It's like, it's the same fucking teams. You know, it's yeah. always going to be Pittsburgh or Chicago or Philly or Detroit or whatever. You know, it's, uh, and then what's funny is that, uh, Toronto being in there against Detroit, that had a really, high number third, well, third yeah, but, best. But, but, but look at but look at think about think about the time that time 2000 you know january 2014 that was the season after the lockout the lockout and uh, you know 2013 2014 is one of those seasons similar to 0405 similar to uh 2122 which is kind of after the pandemic those are seasons that are kind of like you know benchmark seasons where you know there's some new drastic rule change that comes in and style of play something like that so you know fan interest was on the on the rise during that time so you can kind of you know you pick any year here you can kind of you can kind of dissect the implications for these certain numbers so yeah absolutely i'm i'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm a little bummed that nashville dallas was a, a, a significantly low number, especially watching Corey Perry do the walk of shame so early and, <laughs> and it took so long for him to do it. Uh, but unfortunately though, this graph, if you look at it, it kind of, to a certain extent, it started to kind of prove the point of, well, this was, if you look at these numbers, this is the reason why Pittsburgh or Philly or Detroit or Washington or New York are in every third game. You know, or well, boss or Boston. I mean, literally, like Boston is almost in like every third one for, for this, or at least every fourth one. Well, not only that, dude. And but... they've hosted, I think, four. F have they hosted four of these? Yeah the the holy 2010... fuck, are you serious? Yeah. So the the 2010 Winter Classic was at Fenway Park. 
the 2016 uh, Winter Classic was at Gillette Stadium, which is where the Patriots play. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2019, I, 2019 was technically a neutral site game. It was at uh, Notre Dame, um, which I don't. Maybe it is in Massachusetts, and I just am. I thought uh, no. I'm pretty sure Notre Dame's in Indiana. You're right. It, it was it in was it in Notre Dame? Oh, uh, let me double check that. But right. you know, and then Pittsburgh, Boston, which that was a fucking game. Like, <laughs> and that was Fenway again, right? Uh, yeah. And so, so, that's the, other so thing. the fact your... that they've already done it twice in the same venue. Well, and and that's what I was about to say. So there have been, uh, yeah, that was Notre, Notre Dame, Indiana. So technically a neutral site game for that one. Um, and Chicago was actually the the home game there. Um, but uh, you know, with these outdoor games, you know, yeah, that one was at Fenway as well, twenty twenty three. You have, you know, you've gotten to the point where you're going back to stadiums you've been to before. Like they've been to Fenway twice. They've been to uh, Heinz Field in Pittsburgh twice. Um, you've seen reoccurring matchups now. You've seen Toronto Detroit twice. You've seen Philadelphia Pittsburgh twice, you know? So you're starting to see repeat matchups, repeat venues like which let's, to let's, me which to me is bullshit. This thing, because let's bust this thing open a bit like why, you know, football why can't you do it at a soccer stadium? Well, to In me, I'm wherever. like, well, not only that, but I'm, I'm very much kind of like, didn't the LA King or not LA Kings, didn't the, um, oh my God, what are those teams again? <laughs> the Rams, the Rams and the Chargers, don't they play in like a relatively brand new facility? Yeah. SoFi Stadium, I believe has been open for three years. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you're going to tell me the LA Kings can't, don't want to host something like that down there? Yeah, I mean, but dude, yeah, that's the thing. SoFi Stadium is brand new and beautiful. Uh, Allegiant Stadium here is brand new and beautiful. Yeah, um, and you could have like Vegas versus Anaheim. No, you would have to do Vegas versus LA for sure. But okay, but I'm so, well. See, I was gonna say Vegas versus Anaheim just because LA would host their own. Yeah, know. but 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 the thing but the thing is with these outdoor games, it's either you have to do a ratings draw or you have to do a rivalry. And Vegas Anaheim oh. is neither of those things. Oh well, then you do Vegas San Jose. I I wouldn't call that a ratings draw or a rivalry at this point. I think it's a rivalry for the Sharks, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, but, but like why? But here's the thing. Like, and again, the NHL they they love to be all kumbaya with other professional sports leagues, except when it comes to. Uh, appropriating good ideas for themselves why what is stopping like and and you know what if you want to send your premier teams who who cares let's just say hypothetically vegas golden knights the stanley cup champions and the boston bruins the president's trophy champions why don't you send them both over to london build a rink on wembley stadium okay so you you have the stanley cup champion and the president's trophy champion those are your two top teams of the league statistically you go to europe uh, a market the nhl claims they want to be in you play a regular season game there which they already do but again even that has kind of worn out a little bit and you do it at a soccer stadium something they've never done before and you do it at a in a market that is like again like as much as big as european hockey is it is on the small side in um the uk i don't know i'm just it- I go back to the whole thing. There's a million and one ideas. There's a million and one ideas, but I still go back to the whole thing. of like, I just feel like there's too many, too fucking many. Like it's, it's the whole idea. Why don't they just all be outdoor games? Yeah, exactly. Like, I just feel like, oh, heritage classic and winter classic and stadium series. And going back to your thing, stadium series implies more than one. And to, to do some shit like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with it. It's, and isn't heritage classic. That's always, uh, two Canadian teams, right? Yes, with the exception of last year's Heritage Classic, it was Toronto and Buffalo. But that's again that goes back to that goes back to is it a rivalry or is it a ratings draw? That was a rivalry, Toronto yeah. Buffalo. So also Buffalo Buffalo is closer to Canada than like some Canadian teams. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but that's my whole point. It's uh, there's just too much of this shit, and it's like, look, if you're gonna do this whole stadium series, fucking spread the wealth. You know, Winter Classic, spread the wealth. Turn it, you know, f- fucking get it out there to where uh, somebody, I mean, the San Jose Sharks hosted, well, it was 2015, right, at Levi's against the Kings? 
and highest attended game on the on the West Coast for hockey or whatever, and we're mm-hmm. almost ten years removed from it, and there hasn't been another one in California. Yeah, whatever's. Uh all right. I heard this on the NHL Network, and I just wanted to pass it along and see what you thought. It was, and it, the whole thing was six and eighteen in in Major League Baseball, and the 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 thing, the point being, is that in order for baseball to get fans, and they said you could extrapolate this to other sports, including the NHL, if you were taken to a game before you're six years old. The, and they've like I've evidently done studies on this. If you're taken to a game before you're six years old, you're going to be a sports fan for like, you're going to be a fan of that team for life. And conversely, if you never go to a pro sports game before 18, you just like, you're just not like a sports, you don't end up being a sports fan. I think that model is incredibly flawed. As do I. Because. Well, well, you do yours, I'll do mine. Well, I was just going to say, like, I I think the, the first half of that is, I think, is pretty close. Like, if you get into something early, then you you develop sort of a, a childlike love for it. And, and even as an adult, that childlike love never really goes away. But. To say that after you're 18 years old, like you just can't get into sports is probably the most ludicrous comment I've ever heard. Well, not that you can't get into it, but it's just, it's not the, I don't know. It's the, evidently it's not the same or some shit. I don't know. It's just, it's the statistics or whatever that they've shown. I just but I look, think it's I, a stupid I, argument though. Well, I, I, well, I just look at it just based on, from my personal experience is that, I, you know, grew up, I've, I've lived in the Bay area since I was four and I think, I don't know, seven, seven or eight or nine, somewhere in that neck of the woods, I was taken to a couple giants games. Uh, I didn't, you know what it was for me though, is I didn't really give a shit too much about the giants because they were rarely on TV. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, you know, I couldn't. Couldn't see him regularly, and the whole thing is, as a kid, I found watching sports on TV to be pretty boring because it's like, I don't want to watch it. I want to go play it, you know? I would be much more interested in going playing a Little League game than watching a professional team play. Well, and and for me, that's why when I was a kid, you know, for, for reference point, you know, I I consider myself becoming a Sharks fan um, when I was six years old, just because moments from the season that occurred when I was six years old are the earliest hockey memories I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and my whole thing was like, wow, this game is so fast. It's intense. It's exciting. I'm glued to the TV because of how awesome this is. And then I would watch basketball and granted this is TV, not in person, but still I would watch basketball boring. I would watch baseball boring. I would watch football <laughs> I like football, but compared to hockey, boring. And 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 here's the other thing. So I, I've always, you know, cared about how well the 49ers do. But make no mistake, as big of a 49ers fan as I am right now, I didn't become a full-time legitimate football 49ers fan until I was 24 years old. Well, and I'm all in on it. So to say that you have to go to a game before you're 18 or you're not going to be all in, I think is ludicrous. Well, the, the, it, that's not exactly what they were saying. They were just saying that the study, studies show that... Yeah, if what did they, they ask, 50 people? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, though, I feel like I'm a pretty big Sharks fan. The Sharks didn't exist when I was 18. Right. So... I think it's uh, maybe it's it's how old the franchise is when you get into them. I don't know. <laughs> uh, speaking of football, though, did you see the uh, the shit from last week where like a Carolina Panthers chairman like threw his fucking drink on some fan who was, I guess, beacon him? No, I didn't see that. 
Yeah. So dude's like in the owner's box or he's, you know, he's in some sort of fucking box or whatever. And I guess some fan was just fucking railing on him and chief fucking threw his drink on him. And the NFL ended up fining him 300 K for that. The, the dude's personal valuation is over 20 billion. And so they ran the numbers and it was like, okay, so equivalent, the equivalent of that, the average American for what they make, they find him a buck 77. Now, two things. First off, we live in a post COVID world. You don't, you don't, you know, you're not spreading germs like that. You don't do that shit. Secondly, if the, if the roles were, were reversed and some fan threw his drink on a fucking owner or a chairman of the team, you don't think that guy's getting banned for life? Dude, he's going to be in jail. Yeah, for at least for at least a day, and then probably get community service. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan in here is saying it was the owner of the Panthers. So it's like, dude, uh, I I think at this point it's like no, it's going to be a percentage of your income for 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 some shit like that because players get fined more for wearing the wrong game socks. Dude, uh, in Finland, traffic violations are calculated based on your income. There you go. Timu Solani, Timu Solani had like a fifteen thousand dollars speeding ticket once. Hey now, <laughs> fuck! I hope he framed it. <laughs> uh, another thing that came out earlier today, <coughs> Odyssey, and that is not spelled the you know the O Y D version. This is the A U D A C Y spelling. Uh, that company is filing for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy locally. That means that changes are coming for. KCBS, which is a local Bay Area news station, KITS, Alt, Alt Rock, uh, KLLC, which is Alice Hot Adult Contemporary, but the big thing, of course, being KGMZ. Now, KNBR, the other local sports station, they dumped their post 6 p.m. programming. Game is already doing 6 p.m. 6 p.m. programming. Uh, it seems like more changes are going to be coming, but I'm kind of like, how many more changes could there be? Because the game literally... They have three different shows on it. Two of them are hosted by people who won fucking contests. Like, that's where we're at now. And I think, dude, me and you, brother, we can, we can pat ourselves a little bit on the back for this, that we had a very tiny scotch, a minute uh, part of shit like this happening because podcasts have made... Made it so radio is like, dude, do you listen to radio when you're in your car? Absolutely not. What are you listening to? Uh, it depends on my mood, but I'll either listen to a podcast or I'll listen to like my music. Yeah. It's, it's, for me, it's three things. It's either uh, a podcast, like you're saying, like my hard drive, or uh, I might listen to... Um, well, it depends on what's, you know, like uh, NHL, um, satellite radio. Like if I'm, if I want to listen to NHL network or something. Yeah. But c could you not say that satellite radio <laughs> is more podcast than radio? I feel like it is. I, dude, I would totally say that, especially because the vast majority of stuff on Sirius is, uh, you can listen on demand. So, you know, it's like, yeah. I've, I've got a favorite show on the NHL network. And that's the one, you know, I don't have time to listen. To, you know, I can't always be available from 10 to noon, but I'll listen to it, you know, like at 1.30 to 3.30 or some shit like that when, after, when I have time. Right. So, yeah, I would totally agree with you. So, yeah, radio is uh, it's just about dead. I know Ted Ramey was in here very early on. I'd, I'd love to get his takes on this because that's somebody who has done local radio but also, you know, obviously does the Sharks Audio Network now, but... That's where we're at. So, bye bye Odyssey and and radio is just going away. I would I would venture to say this all began in the eighties with deregulation and making it so one company could own you know seven different stations in one market because it used to be you know you could or I think it was you could have three, but you could only have but you had to have be on each band so you could have two AMs and one FM or two FMs and one AM but that was that was it. And deregulation fucked it all up. Tweet of the week. This is, uh, I'm interested to see if any Sharks fans that went to the games this week, if they noticed this, but Chloe um, follows us on Twitter. How, how you doing, Chloe? She said, just heard from a blue coat at SAP 
that the team has asked that there be no more fist bumps allowed before and after warm-ups from fans to players down the tunnel that goes to the dressing room. Wonder why another very cool fan experience taken away. And then uh, shout out to Aiden Hill shutout and Teal for Real underscore 96 for uh, letting us know what's what's up. Evidently, uh, here's what happened. Some some girl decided it was smart to reach over the railing and grab Zadina's arm, and you could see uh, you can see that Zadina not too thrilled about being touched in that moment. Uh, and then goes on to say the ushers did not do their job, dude. I don't think the ushers have been doing their job since that Rona, dude. No, because and and you know the thing is like with the pandemic, like you obviously saw a lot of job turnover and a lot of the really good ushers, really, really good ushers were either retired and they were just looking for something to do, or they had a full-time job. They were a teacher. They were a software engineer. They were this, they were that, whatever. And then they would do like, especially T it was really big with teachers because you would go be an usher during the summer and make some scratch that way. And then with the COVID, you know, the people who were retired and then just had a fun job are like, you know what? I'm retired. I'm over it. Yeah. And the people who are not retired, who had full time jobs elsewhere, they said, you know what? Uh, I want to do my job. COVID really negatively affected me. I want to spend time with my family. I want to, you know, put my free time into my passions, my hobbies, whatever the case. And so now it's like and, and, and you know, I, you know. You've seen this elsewhere, but especially in a place like that, it's a lot of, hi, welcome to your job interview. Okay, I see here that you have use of all your appendages. You <laughs> speak the language. Okay, welcome aboard. Here's your uniform shirt. And, you know, like I, I, I know people who've worked like numerous jobs, like all like the tank, Levi Stadium, Avaya Stadium. I know it's not called that anymore, but try and stop me. Where <laughs> PayPal you Park, know, bitch. <laughs> where there was a legitimate curation of part-time game day staff members. And now it just kind of feels like, Hey, you, uh, have a heartbeat. Come you, on. In. You have a, you have a first and last name. Come on in. Yeah. You have a face. And, and here's the thing. I'll be the first to tell you. And you know what? Uh, I am one of, I'm sure many who have gone to a sharks game in the upper bowl scouted out what's open down low and then during the first intermission gone and set up shop and watch the game much lower absolutely here's here's the thing i should not be allowed to do that more importantly i should not be able to do that for the most I part i would i, I would agree with you i remember being i remember being a kid and you know even a young adult and and being like well hey whoa uh you know, uh, that ticket you have in your hand, that's not a ticket that's for this section. I'm going to have to ask where you're sitting. And now it's just like, oh, uh, you, you, you know, you walked right past me and didn't even look at me. You must know where you're going. <laughs> well, and some people, yes. Uh, it's, I mean, let's be honest. People don't want confrontation. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is just I love kind of being like, confronted. I say bring it on. <laughs> yeah, but the, for the most part, people don't enjoy that. And it's, you know, I'm not getting paid enough to deal with this shit. And... A lot of it is just kind of like if you, you know, it, it, drive it like you stole it. Like if you walk around acting like you own the place, a lot of people won't push back on that. Well, and and you know what? And I'll say this, and I, I'm not going to say the person, I'm not going to say the person's name, but if they happen to acknowledge themselves in the chat, then I will say their name. But I was at an event at the arena with a friend of mine, and they were assaulted by somebody, and the ushers were late to show up. And granted, this was like seven years ago, so I'm not trying to get anybody into trouble, but the ushers were late to show up. And when they got there, they immediately started asking my friend, well, what did you do to provoke them? <laughs> and it's like, hello, you know? So just like, and, and, and again, that was seven years ago. That was one person, one usher, one bad apple. But at the same time, like, you you've fallen short of your expectations and i feel like to your point since covid that has gotten worse yeah it's it seems like it's really gone gone downhill unfortunately and it and again that's not that's not specific to the sharks no dude it's literally every every i would say every professional sports venue i would say oh a lot of concert hey, venues too concert venues like again i i'm not going to i i'm not here to try and like flame people 
but I have noticed a lot of places and, and I get it as somebody who used to work with the public or work where you answer to the public. I get it. The average citizen who comes into your store, restaurant, venue, whatever is a fucking moron. I get it. <laughs> but well, I will say, this- dude, the shoreline post COVID. Yeah, dude. Like that's the, the, there was definitely turnover. Yeah, but at the same time, just like, I don't know, like I see, again, I I just see a lot of people who don't take pride in their work. And, <sighs> I underst- and I understand there's a million and one reasons why that might be difficult. I understand that. But I don't know. I just have it in my head. And the person I'm talking about, they just outed themselves in that last comment, Kevin. Um, <laughs> like, I, I have it in my head is like, hey, it, you know, if you hate your job, but you still show up. You got to, you got to put in the work. Well, yeah. And it's funny you say that because, and this is totally off topic, but there was literally an article that came out earlier today that I saw on the Tweety that would, it was, um, Jodie Foster saying that something along the lines of she didn't want to work with millennials or whatever on any movie products projects, because so far her experience has been that they're just fucking lazy and do the bare minimum. Like, yeah. And, and you know what? And I, and like, I'm not going to. I don't want to sit here and be like crapping on someone who's like doing their job, but you know, there's a, there's a, a food establishment. I'm not going to say where, <laughs> but there's a food establishment where, um, you know, it's a lot of younger people, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's high schoolers, maybe it's people in their early twenties. I don't want to speculate, but I E people that are younger than me. And, um, you know, I go in there, I get food for myself, I get food for my wife and I'm waiting for it to be ready and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they take, you know, they, they like get it all queued up and then it's sitting on the counter all the while they're like yucking it up with their coworkers about whatever. And all the while my food is sitting there and I'm just like, like, hello, like, Mm -hmm. are, you know, like we're doing a job here. You know what I mean? And and again, I don't like, again, I'm not trying to call anyone out because I've been on the other side of the counter. I totally get it. But I just, it's so stupid. I hate to even say this, but like, as somebody who's about to be 29, like I look at this crop of 20 year olds and I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Well, and see, this is the thing that bums me out is that I see, um, molasses saying minimum wage, minimum work. No, fuck that. Because the, the, how you get to be making more than minimum wage is you do more than minimum work. That's what that's, there's these things called promotions because they show that it's you're a valued person because you do more than the minimum. I I, I see it both ways. Like I said, I I, and, I completely oh, and I'm sorry, Sleepy Mofo pointing out that it was Gen Z not millennial. I don't give a fuck. I just know it's not my generation. It's somebody younger than me and I've noticed the same shit. But go and, ahead. And, and 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 here's the thing. Like I totally get it. Like again, I <laughs> This show uh, is totally gone off the rails. <laughs> I you know, I've been like I've been in a position where you're at a job and you feel disillusioned and it hurts and it hurts your ability to like get up for the job. You know what I mean? Like I've totally been there, but I think you owe it to yourself and you, you owe it to yourself as a person, I think to say, Hey, you know what? I'm getting disillusioned here. I need to take a step away (coughs) instead of, instead of just continuing to show up and saying, well, I fucking hate this job, but I'm still here. Yeah. Doing enough to not get fired. Yeah. And it's like, and, and I just think like, like, I'm, you know, this is not a pro business rant or anything like that, but just for yourself, like don't subject yourself to a situation that makes you unhappy. Well, and see my, uh, my part of it is I said, you know, like if I'm some, someplace after a year and I'm like, you know, I'm just not feeling it or whatever. I, when I go in to tell them like, you know, i I, we need to have a conscious uncoupling, whatever the hell the thing is. Like I, something needs to change. I would much rather me have like kicked ass and for them to sit there and go, Oh my God, well, you know, what can we do? We don't want to lose you. You're a valuable employee versus, Oh, okay. Bye. You know, there's a bunch of people we can find just like you, but bye. You know, some people are going to be successful and some people aren't. It's going to be the people that Go the extra mile. Okay, Jesus Christ. Can we stop being so preachy? We should have been done 10 minutes ago. All right, let's move on. Ooh, Barracuda. Oh, man. Can When can we replace the um, coaching staff and development group? 
Kuda. Anyway, uh, Kuda played three games this week, hosting the Roadrunners before sliding down to SoCal for a pair against uh, Ontario. Against Tucson, the Kuda pulled out a 6-4 win with Gushin getting the first and last goals of the game, while uh, Gavaki, Sabarin, and Muka Madulin all had multi-point games. Todd finishing with three points. Former Sharks legend John Leonard had a secondary helper for the Coyotes affiliate. In a pair against the Rain, the, sh- the the Cuda, unfortunately, were shut out and then picked up a loss in overtime despite a three-point night from the Redeemer, Radim Shimik, who didn't even make the three stars, by the way. Figure that out. Uh, and just as a friendly reminder to you, in two nights, the game on the ninth will... Uh, how's that working out? Why does why do I see have a thing here that says the uh, the game on the ninth for the CUDA will be televised on NBCSN? Is that like is it a one o'clock start or something? Um, let's wouldn't see. they be showing the game against? Oh, you know what? Maybe because the game against Toronto that's going to be what four four p.m. locally. So maybe it is. Maybe it's four o'clock locally. Sharks in Toronto, and then what seven o'clock? Barracuda. Yeah. Yeah, Bar- Barracuda Rain are at seven, and there you go. The sh- and the Sharks are at. Uh... They're playing the Rain again. Yeah, so Christ Sharks at, sh- Sharks at four p.m. and then Barracuda at seven p.m. So it's kind of like the television version of uh, the the old uh, double days back in the day. Remember at the tank? <laughs> nice. Oh, cool. All right, so um, there you go. So again, as always, uh, you know, Ian Reed, Kevin Lacey, Sharks Jewels, Mark E. Mark. Follow them on the Tweety for those live tweets and gifts during most of the CUDA games. And of course, Teal Town USA. Prize time, everybody. Uh, and with the exception of uh, Brian in Canada, who I uh, we failed to get his postal code. So that'll go. <laughs> it should go out this week. Uh, we have a prize to give away, and last week we asked you what would the combined attendance be for all three games this week, and I gotta tell you, well, let's see, did the the really low attendance versus Winnipeg or the quote unquote sellout against Toronto did that screw anybody? I have a total of forty thousand one fifty one. Is that what you have? That is correct. All right, so. Does we have a winner? We does have a winner. All right. And closest without going over, how close did the did does 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 we get? This person, our winner, big winner, they were five hundred and twenty-four uh tickets distributed. <laughs> uh but beneath the forty thousand one hundred and fifty one that you mentioned. So they threw up a thirty nine something? Yep, thirty nine and thirty nine six twenty seven. Nice. Is this a new winner? Uh yes, new winner. Hell yeah. Uh, re reoccurring player. Uh, they did not play a week ago, but prior to that, they played. Um, they did the Granlin one. They did. Uh, they did not do the Addison one. They did. They did a. They've played a bunch this year. They missed a couple, but mostly they've been in and around it. So, yeah, our big winner. Is uh, and I asked the person because I I do I am in the business of getting people's names right. I did ask the person for the phonetic spelling of their name, so I got it right. <laughs> Hell yeah! They they've not responded to me, so I'm gonna take my best guess at it. Oh, um, I'm gonna say it's Jessel. Okay. Jessel, 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 uh, Anthony, shout out. Uh, it's you not are Anthony Jessel Nick, is it? Uh, the name that I have is, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's the, not for those of, for those of you unaware, that's actually the name of a somewhat famous comedian, but go ahead. Well, you clearly need to be a hundred years old to know that. Oh. Um, and so Jezel is our big winner. Again, if I, if I mispronounce that, please let me know. Um, big winner. They were emailed yesterday, uh, looking, getting the address. They have not responded, but it's cool. Whatever. No big problem. Um, so there you go. And uh, I've yet to put it together, but because Jezel won, that is a quote-unquote raffle ticket in the to-be-determined season-end raffle pot. Nice. Um, and, and in case you don't remember the passing comment I made two weeks ago, uh, if you win 
you get a ticket. If you win again, you will not win, but you will still get a second ticket for mm-hmm. the the to be determined raffle. And uh, how many were over the number? Uh, four. Okay. Um, cool. Before we get into that, a uh, couple CUDA comments that I saw on here. Jules, uh, of course, we love the CUDA. Ian pointing out that uh, Bordalo is injured. Mm-hmm. So, that, of course, that sucks. Uh, how much is the CUDA develop, uh, development getting hindered by the staff? Uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, Lacey saying, hey, now, Barracuda were losing 3-0 and 4-1 in the third period last night. So, hey, they they still pulled out one point in overtime. So, you got to appreciate that. Uh, man. And then, oh, Felix saying, AJ being like, I'm hanging out with the wrong age group on this podcast. Oh, that's absolutely true. So, uh, for this week, I, I thought about it. I let it marinate. I let it stew, if you will. And I came up with a question. Let me let me know, Jerk, if this, uh, if this works for you. Three games coming up this week at Toronto, at Montreal, at Ottawa. Which period of which game will have the highest amount of shots on goal for the Sharks. And what will that number be? Closest without going over. So, so that you, way you have to you have to get the closest without going over on the shots on goal, what you think the most will be, but then you have to name the game that it happens in and the period. So, so your, hypo- your, hypothetically, your submission could be like Ottawa- Comma, second period, comma, 17. Okay, I'm with you. So, okay, I'm with you. Here's the thing. How do you pick a winner? Like, would you go basically whatever, say hypothetically, say second period against Montreal is the period with the highest shot. You would then go to the people who said Montreal second period and then select from that group. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I have it right. I am... Totally cool with that. So that would be uh, highest shooting period. Yeah. All right. Good well, deal. So there you go. So that let's let's say it slowly. <laughs> what period? There's going to be six periods that we know of that are going to be played this week at Toronto, at Montreal, at Ottawa. So which period in which game will have the highest? amount of shots on goal for the San Jose Sharks and how many shots yes yeah okay and so yes and again as usual highest without going over so there may be somebody that hits you know I I get what you're saying that there may be somebody that goes uh that it's 17 second period Montreal and actually the highest one ends up being 18 versus uh in the second period versus Ottawa like they were the closest on number, but they got the game wrong. So how are we, that's the thing is how do we, what's the tiebreaker here? You know what I mean? So I think what you would do, so however many, however many guesses we get, what I would think is, so the first thing would be. You have like, to get the game right. You have to get the game. So first things first. So what? let's say hypothetically, the highest shooting period is second period Montreal. So immediately I'm going to look at all the guesses that have Montreal second period. Then from that subsection, whoever is closest without going over to the shots will uh, be the winner. If, for example, nobody says Montreal second period, but we have people who say Montreal, that will be the subsection I pull the shots from. Okay, cool. All right, there you go. I I fear this might be the first time that we don't have a winner. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, we got to come up with something. So this this seemed a little convoluted. So fuck it, I went with it. So you have to email hockeyjerk10 at gmail dot com with your answer. Remember, your answer must be submitted before puck drop on Tuesday, January 9th, twenty twenty four. And we will announce the winner, of course, next week. As always, if you're outside the U.S. 48 states you have to cover the freight if you want us to ship the prizes and there you go i i I feel like it's an interesting like it's something that you're gonna have to think about a little bit i like it 
We'll, we'll, uh, it'll be interesting to see what we come up with next week. Something, something next week might be super easy. So, mm-hmm. but coming up this week, the Sharks start off a five game roadie in Toronto on Tuesday, followed by those games in Montreal and Ottawa. Canadians are hockey 500 while the Senators are at the bottom of the Atlantic. The three teams they face the following week are Buffalo, Chicago, and Anaheim. So if there was an ever a time to stop a losing skid and set that first overall pick in stone, uh, one of those things, uh, now's the time. So we will see you all next Sunday at our usual 7 p.m. start time. Famous last words from you, Jerk. Famous last words. I've already received one submission, and they did it correctly. Did they say Montreal in the second period? <laughs> uh, no comment. Okay. because it, I, it I don't want to stack the deck against yeah, anyone. No, I like that. But it, ju- it just felt like we kept saying that as an as an example. And I'm like, I wonder if that's going to subconsciously like in, end up getting you a bunch of second period Montreal. Well, guesses, well you but. know what? Second, The reason why I said second period Montreal is because that is the midpoint of this week when you think about it. Oh, there you go. All what right. Think? Perfect. So, um, yeah, famous last words from you? I just told you. Was that it? Okay. Well, I thought you were going to do better. I had I had more expectation from you. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> when, you, when you expect disappointment, you'll never be disappointed. There you go. Hey, let's leave. No, never mind. Uh, on Twitter, you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore strong. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave your takes in the comment section of the video if you couldn't join us live. And remember, keep us commercial free by using that super chat option that uh, Mitya used earlier a couple times. Thank you again so much for that. Uh, Better yet, if you want to help support us, keep us commercial free. You can find us on Venmo at Teal Town USA. And always, if you're listening on the Apple Podcast, five-star rating and a cool review would be very much appreciated. And if you need the 24-7 fix of Sharks Talk, you can hit up the Jerk Man on Twitter to get your invite to the Discord server. You can find links to our social media, podcast apps, and more included in the show notes. Find everything on TealTownUSA.com. And remember to check out After Dark following every single Sharks game. And one thing that I did neglect to mention when we were talking about the CUDA is I know that Ian was talking about him and I believe Jules working on a, a show like maybe every other week or so, or at least once a month, getting some a little more talk in there. Or it was there were going to be a little more talk about the CUDA during After Dark. But either way, look for that. Um, Ian has his Twitter, so just follow him. He'll let you know. Is that it? Yep. Cool. Thanks for listening then, everybody. We'll catch you all next Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific.